Begin today the Gemara towards the bottom of Daf Memdalar Amit Beis, three lines from the bottom where it says Toni Shila. We're continuing the halachas of Maitzi Shamra, or the halachas of a woman that uh, after Edison she was Mizana, had a relation with someone else, and because of this she's Chayef Skila. So Shila over here brings halachas in relation to this concept. Toni Shila, Shila taught the following Shalosh Midais Benaira. The following three halachas regarding Anaira. If witnesses come when she is already in the house of her father-in-law, meaning that she's fully married already. This is after the Nisuin, she's living with her husband by her, by her father-in-law. And the Edim say that she was Mizana, she had a relation with someone else when she was still in his father's house, meaning after Edison, after the first age of marriage. So then what happens? Cycle in Isa, she gets Skila. Where is the Skila done? Al Pesach Beisavia by the entrance of her father's home. Kalayma, why do we do this? Why are we doing, giving her the skila at the entrance of her father's home? This is sort of a punishment for the father as well. People should see and say, look, look at what kind of a girl you raised, that she acted in this way. But The second Allah he said is, but if the Edim came when she was still in the father's house, in other words, before she was fully married to her husband, Shazinsa Bevesavi, and the Adam say that she had a relation with someone else here when she was still by the father's house, and again, this is after Edison. So then the skila does not have to be done by the entrance of a father's house. The skila has to be done by the entrance of the city. Why? Which to go, the Gemara will bring soon the source for this. But the point is, when she's already in her, in her father-in-law's house, already fully married by her husband, so people won't necessarily realize that what happened over here is related to the education of a father. So therefore then she has to go back to the entrance of a father's house to get punished so people should understand uh, that, uh, that the cause of such a thing comes from the father, not raising his daughter right. But when what happened happened when she was still living by the father, so then everybody knows that it's related to her upbringing in her father's house. So it's not necessary to punish her at the entrance of her father's house. So then she's punished by the entrance of the city. The third Allah Hashila said, what if, when she was again after Edison, she had a relation with someone else? And then she's not a knight anymore, she became a begettus, which is from the age of 12 and a half. So now at this point, because her body changed and she became a begettus, so now she does not get the punishment of skila, which is a more harsher death, but the, the punishment of chenek, which is a lighter way of death. Which okay, but the skila is stoning and chenek is strangulation. Okay, so the point over here is the Gemara now is going to focus on the last halacha that Sheila said, mm-hmm. and that is that because her body changed, and she matured, and she became a begettus, so her einish also changes. The whole halacha of her getting skila is only while she's still a naira. But if she changed and now she's a begettus, now her punishment changes to be chenek. Now chenek is the usual einish of Misa that's given to a woman that's Mizana, that has a relation with someone else after marriage. So, but then there's a special Allah, to Anaira Hamayrasa, after the first stage of marriage, if she's a Naira and she had a relation with someone else, then she gets a unique einish of death, which is the Skila. But what the Gemara is saying is, but if she's not a Naira anymore, now she's a Begeres, so then she gets the regular Misa of Chenek that any woman that would be Mizana under her, uh, her husband, after she's married, she, she would get that. So the Gemara now says, based on this last Allah here, the Meimre shall we say, the Cholhechi de Shtani Gufa, that any time her body goes through this change, before she was a Naira, and now she's a Begeres, she matured, so Ishtani Ketala, so therefore the Einish, the Misa, the way that we give her the Einish also changes. That it's not anymore Skila, but now because she, she changed, so she gets now this Misa of Chenek. In other words, the point is we could look at, at the stage of what she was in at the time of the Aveda that she did, and then she was a Naira, so she would deserve the unique Misa of Skila. Or we could look at her current stage, when we're actually making the Psak Din. And now she's a begettus. So what the Gemara is saying is we see from here that if her body changed, we look at the present. And therefore, if now she's a begettus, we give her the punishment that we give a begettus, which is chenek and not skila. But the Gemara asks on this. We see in another b'raise, I'll ask you a contradiction. There's a b'raise that says, Naira Mairasa. So this Naira, that was after the first stage of marriage, Edison. Shazinsa, and she had a relation with someone else. 
Bagra, and then she became a begeris. Her husband let out a bad rumor about her and, and claimed that said that she's not a basula. She had a relation with someone else after the Edison. So because at this point she's a begeris, he let out this rumor after she's already a begeris, so the husband will not get Malchus if it turns out that he lied about her. So even though usually by a Meitzi Shemra, letting out this bad rumor, the husband gets Malchus, but over here he does not get Malchus because she's already a begeris at this point. And the Malchus is only if she still is a Naira. Mm-hmm. And also, he doesn't have to give her the Knas of 100 coins for what he said. When he gets afraid. Yep. He, and then the Braise says, now this girl, if it turns out that what he said is true, so then this, this girl, this, his wife that is, or or Aidan, that came and said this testimony about her. And then it turns out that these Adam lied, and really she did not have a relation with anyone else. Magdimen lebeis haskila. They come and they get skila for what they did. So, so we say over here that skila. She still gets skila. Even though now she's a begeres, she still, we go according to the time of the Aveda that she did. And then she was still a Naira. So even though her body changed, and at this point she's a begeres. When the husband let out the bad rumor, she was already a begeres. But nevertheless, we look at the time when she did the Aveda, and then she was a Naira. Just a moment, just a moment. So the Gemara asks the question, he, could we read this Braise literally as it says, that we give both her skila and the Adim that said false testimony about her doing this Aveda, could we give both of them skila? Of course not. Ella, Ella, Sigmar explains what the Bryce is saying is, Oihi, Oizem Skila. If what the Adam said is true, so then she gets the Skila. If what the Adam said is false, so then the Adam gets the Skila. But right. the Gemara's question is that we see over here clearly, in this case of Moitzi Shemra, that even though the girl's body changed and now she's a begeres, but nevertheless, what Einish do we give her? The original Einish that she, get, that she would have to get for being a, a Mizana when she's a Naira. So if so, the question is, how does Sheila say any different? Why does Sheila say that if she became a begeres, <coughs> sorry, so now she gets chenek? So the Gemara answers, Omar Rove, so Zaktarova, so it's not the same thing. What Sheila is speaking about and what this Brais is speaking about is not exactly the same. Now before I read it inside, the point the Gemara is going to say is, before in the Brais that Sheila taught, he wasn't speaking about a case of Moitzi Shemra. There was no situation over there where the husband is the one that let out this rumor about his wife after he got married to her. Over there, it's just speaking about a Naira Hamayrasa, a, a girl that's after the first stage of marriage, and she went and had a relation with someone else. The Braise here is speaking about this girl that had a relation with someone else after the first stage of marriage. Then she got fully married. And after she got fully married, her husband was Moitzi Shemra. And now the question is, in this situation of Moitzi Shemra, what Einish would we give her? Do we give her the original Einish or not? So Rav is going to explain, since the Braise is speaking about Moitzi Shemra, that's a Chiddush, that's a different story. Moitzi Shemra Kamrit, you're bringing me a question on what Sheila said from a case where she was already fully married and now the husband was Moitzi Shemra. That's different. Shani Moitzi Shemra, the case of Moitzi Shemra is different. The Chiddushu. Over there, the fact that by Moitzi Shemra she gets Skila, that's a unique Chiddush that we find regarding Moitzi Shemra. And the Gemara explains why it's a Chiddush. Oh, because what's usually the halacha regarding a woman that was fully married and she had a relation with someone else after she's an Eshesish? So usually the halacha is you don't get skila. The ha nichnas Usually a woman that already entered into chope, which is the full marriage. And v'loi nivala. Even, even if she did not have any relation with her husband yet, but it was after the chope, which is usually yichot, whatever the chope refers to, but she's already fully married. But alma, in a usual case, and Vizinza, and now she had a relation with someone else and she's already a full Eshesish. So what's usually the punishment she gets? But Chenek. She gets Chenek. The, the Misa of Chenek. Mm-hmm. And but when it comes to the case of a Moitzi Shemra. So now what's the case of a Moitzi Shemra? Yeah. She had a relation with someone after the first stage of marriage. After Edison. Mm-hmm. And now she did get fully married to her husband. And only after the full marriage, there's a husband say that I know that my wife had a relation with someone else. So now there's something that changed here in between. Even though the Aveda she did at the time of Edison, but now something changed. Now she's fully yes. married. So seemingly we should give her the punishment that we give every woman after full marriage, which would be Chenek, because there's a change that took place. Now she's fully married. But nevertheless, what do we say by Meitzi Shemra? Beskila. She still gets the skila that she would get 
originally after having a relation with someone after the first stage of marriage, even though now she's fully married. So what do I see from this? That when it comes to Maitzi Shemra, even though there was a change that took place, and now she's fully married, nevertheless, the original Einish of Skila that she would get before remains even now. So therefore the Gemara says, we could say the same thing regarding if, she, if there's another change that took place. Not only now she got fully married, but also now she became a begettus. She's not a knight anymore. So even though she now became a begettus, nevertheless, that change does not matter. Because Maitzi Shemra is a chiddish, that that original einish of skila that she should be getting, because of the time when she did the Aveda, that she was then a naira, remains now as well. But this is only by Maitzi Shemra though. But in the case of the Braisa of Shila, he wasn't talking about a Maitzi Shemra. He was talking about a girl that had, a, that had a relation with someone else after the first stage of marriage. And now she became a begettus. She never got fully married yet. There's no Maitzi Shemra here. So if there's no Maitzi Shemra here, the Chiddush of Maitzi Shemra does not apply. And if now she becomes a Begeres, we give her the Einish according to her status today. And a Begeres gets Chenek and not Skila. But the Gemara refused this answer. Amalei Ravuna Bereide Rav Yeshua Lerave, Ravuna Bereide Rav Yeshua asks Rave, how could you say that this Braise here that says Maitzi Shemra still gets Skila is the source to explain why, by Maitzi Shemra, we don't pay attention to any difference that happened to this girl at this point. You can make a very simple distinction. Dilma, perhaps, Kicha des Rachmane, the Chiddush of Maitzi Shemra that we just pointed out. And we proved that even though a change took place, nevertheless, her original status of skill remains. When do I say that? Heiched Elo Yishtani Gufa. If there was no change that took place regarding her physical body. The only change that took place is that before she was not fully married, and now she's fully married. So for that we say, even though now she's fully married, the original Einish of Skila that there was when she was only married the first stage remains. That, that Chiddush is true. But regarding a case where her body changed, that's what a begettus is. A begettus is a physical change in her body where she becomes mature at 12 and a half. Over here, the Taita never said this Chiddush regarding a Maitzi Shemra that you still get Skila. So the fact that it says here that, that um, again, this answer that Rava wanted to say that there's a distinction between the case of Maitzi Shemra and the regular case of Anaira Maitrasu without being Maitzi Shemra, that by Maitzi Shemra there's a special Chiddush, we don't find regarding Maitzi Shemra that the Torah was Machadish even when her body changed that the same original Misa should apply. If so, the Allah should be that she should still get, again, the Allah should be like Shila said, that she should get a Chenek. So why is it that the Braise says regarding Maitzi Shemra that she still gets Skila if her body changed? So the point is, the Stira still remains. The question that, that we have is, when her body changes, do we say that we go according to her status today and therefore she gets Chenek because now she's a Begeres? Or do I say I go according to her status before? And because before she was a Naira, so therefore she gets Skila. And don't answer me that Maitzi Shemra is different because over there there's a special Chiddush. No, we don't find that there's any special Chiddush regarding Maitzi Shemra when her body changes. So if so, the contradiction we have still remains. Shila said that she gets Chenek. And in Abraisa it says that once she becomes a Begedes, she gets Skila. She still gets Skila, that is. So therefore the Gemara says, El Amar of Nachman by Yitzchak. Mm-hmm. Doesn't talk about Shinsu Gufa. Okay. Any time there's a Maitri Shemra, yeah. why are we making separate why are we now putting another aspect in it of of Shinsu Gufa Gufa? Because the Taita when it in the Parsha, if you look in the Parsha of Maitri Shemra, yeah. the Taita writes clearly again and again, Naida, 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 Naida. So if the Taita keeps on writing Naida Naida, so then if now when we're pasquering the halacha, she's a big guess, she's not a Naida anymore. How can we give her a skila? So, LMI, what are you going to argue and say? But when she did the Aveda, she was a Naira. Who cares what she is today when, she's passing the hal- when we're passing the halacha about her? If today she's not a Naira anymore, but then she was a Naira. But that's exactly the heart of what the Gemara is discussing. Do we look at the time when she did the Aveda? Or do we look at the time when, we pass- when we're passing the Din? And that's the contradiction we have over here. Sheila is saying, look at today, and therefore today she's a Begeret, so she gets Chenek. And in the Braise it says that we look at the way she was in the beginning. And because in the beginning she was an Ida, she still is an Ida. We, we still give her the Einish of an Ida. And regarding this, we have no reason to say that Moitzi Shemra 
Even if her body changed, there's no reason to change the psak din. We never find such a thing regarding Meitzi Shemra that if her body changes, there's no reason to change the psak din. We do find regarding Meitzi Shemra that if she gets married, fully married, that there's a reason to change, that we still don't change the psak din, but not regarding if her body changed. Yeah, but, okay. we do, but we do find, you know, it's not, not negative, but we do find that the, the punishment for, for at, at the time of the, 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 the two different punishments, whether it was done at the beginning or at the end. Aidison and Nisuin. Aidison and Nisuin. Okay, you could know, be. By the hands, this and that. You know, okay. okay. So the Gemara brings over here that this is the Machlekes Tanoim. Elo Amarav Nachma by Yitzchak, Ishtani, Velo Ishtani. This question over here, whether I say that her status changes according to the present, and I give her the, the Misa today, or Veloyishtani, that I don't look at that change. And I say that I give her the Einish of who she was when she did the Aveda, Tanoihi. This is a Machlaikis Tanoim. The Tanan, because we learned in the Mishnah, Chatu at Shalainis Manu. Individuals that sinned before they were appointed. What this is talking about is the carbon chatas that you bring when you do an Aveda Bishagik. So in the Torah it says, a head yet, the ordinary person brings one carbon chatas, which is a kispa or a seira, a lamb or a goat. But if you're a Nasi or a Melech and you do an Aveda B'Shegig, you have to bring a more expensive car. You have to bring a bull, a par. So what happens if the person did the Aveda when he was an ordinary individual? And then the Nismano. And then when it comes to the time of bringing the carbon, now he has already been elevated to a higher status. So it's a similar question that we had before. Do we look at the time when he did the Aveda? Or do we look at the present when he's bringing the carbon? So here we see a Machlaikis. So the Tanakhama says that we still treat them like an ordinary individual and they bring the carbon that they were supposed to bring before. The fact that today they're a new status, that doesn't change anything. Rab Shimon says, If they realize the Aveda that they did before they were appointed to this new status of being a Nasi or a Melech, so then they have to bring the carbon that they were obligated to bring before. But if they only found out, they realized what they did wrong after they became already a king or a, or a nasi, then piturim. Then they'll be completely potter of bringing a carbon altogether. Pitur? Completely potter. Huh? Just a moment. So what is the Gemara saying? You see from here this idea when there's a change in the person, oh. that there's a is between the Tanakhama and Rab Shimon, whether you go according to before, and they still have to bring their carbon that they were obligated to bring before, or do we go according to the present, and therefore the potter from a carbon. So Rashi says that this case the Gemara is bringing here, regarding this person that was an ordinary individual and now became a Nasi or a Melech, is an example of a Shini Haguf. This is considered to be a change in the body, even though the truth is there is no physical change really. But being elevated to such a status, Rashi considers it to be a Shini Haguf. Taisus disagrees. Taisus says it's not a Shini Haguf, it's just a change in the status of the person. And nevertheless, the Gemara is bringing this as a source and that we see that there's a machlaikis regarding what we're speaking about before, when there's a shini yaguf from a girl, from being a naira to being a begeres. If we find that there's a machlaikis regarding this situation when there isn't even a change in the body, for sure we could say that there's a machlaikis regarding a shini yaguf. But the Gemara now refutes this as well, to say that there's a machlaikis here in this braise, uh, the two braises we brought before, Shiloh and the other braise, that it's based on this argument regarding this individual that didn't have very b'shegek. Says the Gemara, how could you compare? What do I see and hear from what Rav Shimon said? The Azal Af What Rav Shimon is saying is that when a person is chayav a carbon chatos, I have to take into account both the time he did the Aveda and also in addition the time when he finds out that he did the Aveda. You have to take. He's not saying that you only take into account the time when you find out about it. You have to take into account both. And therefore, because you have to take into account both, both of them cause the chiv of the carbon. So if at the time when you did the Aveda, you had one status, you were an ordinary person, and at the time when you found out you were already in a higher status and you were already a Nasi and a Melech, mm -hmm. so because you're not the same status at both of them, so you don't have both to, uh, to cause you to be high of the carbon. And therefore, you're going to be potter. However, the ozel, the yidiyah, v'loya ozel, basachatas. But to say that according to Rab Shimon, we only follow the time period when you find out. And now you found out when you're a nasi. And he disregards your status altogether when you did the Aveda. Mi 
do we ever hear that Rav Shema says such a thing that you just look at the present itself? And the Gemara explains, if Rav Shema would hold so, in Cain, Lysi, Karbin, Kidahashta. So then he would have to bring a carbon according to his status, which is now. And that is Moshuach, if he became anointed to, uh, to be a Kayin. So then Par, he would have to bring a bull. And Venasi, and Anasi brings a Sar. So the point that we see over here is that Rav Shimon did not say that he brings a carbon according to the status that he's on today. What Rav Shimon is saying is he brings no carbon at all. And the reason is because Rav Shimon says you have to take into account the time that he did the Aveda and also the time that he finds out. And because they don't match up, he can't bring any carbon at all. But we don't see that Rav Shimon say you go according to the present and he should bring a carbon according to his present status today. So we want to bring a source from Rav Shimon regarding the question we had when a person's goof changes, do I look at the status before or do I look at the status today? Rav Shimon never says that you look at the present status today. So that's not a good source for this Mahlaikis. Uh -huh. So therefore the Gemara comes back and says that you're right, we're going to have to change the Girsa in the Braisa that Rav Shila said before. Ha'omalei Rav Yechanan Latana. Rav Yechanan said to the Tana, Tni, learn in the Braisa of Rav Shila, of Shila that is, Tidim Beskila, that even though she was before a night and now she's a begettus, her body changed, she still gets Skila. The change of the body does not matter. And this is the same thing that it said in the other Braisa that we quoted. So this Takano Stila, we have to change and you still get Skila. Okay, so, that, so therefore there's no, there's no stir of but now the Gemara brings the source from the Teire. Vamai, why is it that if she's now a begeres, does she still get skila? Naira hamayras amrachmana. The Teire says only if she's a naira, vaha begeres, and now she's a begeres. And says the Gemara, Omar Rabbi Law, Rabbi Law says, Omakra, the Teire uses the expression, ha naira. Okay, the full pasuk over there is, vaitziu es ha naira pesach habesavia. So the Torah uses the expression Hanaira. What does Hanaira mean? Hanaira shahoysa kvar. Hanaira means that she, even if she just was a Naira before, she gets Kila. Even if today she changed and she's a begaddis. Omalei Rab Hanani ala Rabbi Law. So Rab Hanani says to Rabbi Law, based on this, if we have a Pasuk that says that we still treat her like who she was originally, so if so, milki nami lilki. So the husband that was Maitzi Shemra should also be Chayiv Malkus for being Maitzi Shemra on her, his wife, or on what she did when she was a Naira. You're telling me that you go according to the status before. So we should say for the husband the same thing, that he should get Malchus as well. Umeya Sela, and he should also have to pay the Knas of the 100 Sela. Nabi Lashalem, let him pay. What did it say before in the Braisa? That even if she gets Skila, but he does not get Malchus, and he does not have to pay the Knas. But why not, if we have the Drosha from the Pasuk that says that we have to look at who she was before? That was a question of Hanani asked. Amalei, Rabbi Law, when he heard this question, answered very sharply. He said, Rachmanan Itzlan, Mahay Daita. Hashem should save us from your question, from such an opinion of yours. Such a, such a foolish question. Foolish Hashem question. Save, save us from this question. So he, he responded in the same way. So Rabbi Hanani says back to Rabbi Law, Adarab, on the contrary, Rachmanan Itzlan, Midaita Didach. Hashem should save us from your opinion. That you're making this distinction. Why are you saying regarding her that we give her the, the, such a harsh punishment of Skila according to what she did before? Um, but regarding the husband, no. We look at her status today and today she's a begettus and he doesn't get any punishment at all. God it should really save better. us from your opinion. <laughs> so the Gemara now explains, So what's like the reason why we make this distinction? And the reason is as follows. The fact that she's getting skila, what's causing this punishment for her? The actions that she did. And when did the actions that she did happen? At the time when she was an idol. And Vizeh, but the husband, of Garmuloi, when he's getting the punishment of Malchus or of, of uh, paying the knas, that's the, the, his lips when he spoke, uh -huh. when he was Maitzi Shemra. Mm -hmm. He spoke uh, uh, against his wife and he said a lie about her. So Zum, I said, Garmala, because she's Anoi Naira. So she, with her action that she, she, actions that she did, she was Anaira when she was Mizana. So therefore she gets Skila for what she did then. And we apply the Pasuk, Han Naira, she was then. And Vizeh, Akima Sfais, again, Akima Sfas of Garmaloi, it's the speaking, the moving of his lips that is causing him to get the punishment. And therefore, Aim is Kamachayev, at what point is he getting this, what's causing this Chiyuv? Ha'ishaita, it's at that time when she's already a Begeres. Ha'ishaita Begeres Avoy. At this time, she's already a Begeres. And for a Begeres, the Torah does not give the punishment of, of Malchus or Knas. He's off? Yeah. Tanarabana, we learned in Abraise. 
Going back now to the earlier point that Sheila taught in the Braisa. Naira, my Rasta Shazinsa, Naira, she was married, the first stage of marriage, and she was Mazana, Cyclonis, Al Pesach Beisavia. The skill is done at the entrance of her father's home. Ainla Pesach Beisav. If there is no entrance to the father's home, Cyclonis, Al Pesach Shara Ir, Hai. So then we give her the skila at the entrance of the city. Or we learned also before in the Braisa of Sheila that if this nus happened when she was still, when she was uh, already in the. Um, Again, when she was still in the father's house, also the skill is done at this uh, entrance of the city. But then over here, this Braisa continues and as and says as follows, In a city that's mostly Goyim, so then we don't do the skill by the entrance of the city. Then the skill is done by the entrance of the Bezden. There's a similar halacha we find also regarding a person that serves away the Zara. person serving away the Zara, we give him skila at the entrance of the city that he served that way the there. of the Kechavim, but if it's a city that's mostly Gayim, so like the Nislav Pesach Bezdin. So then we give him the skila at the entrance of the Bezdin. So from where do I know this? How do I know this halacha that you give the punishment of, by the entrance of the Bezdin and so on? Or first at the entrance of the city, and if it's Gayim, at the entrance of the Bezdin. The Tan Rabbanan, so we learn in another Braise that brings the Psukim for this. She'arecha, so this is the Pasik by a person that serves Avidizara. So it says, She'arecha at the gate of the city. Zeshar She'avad bai. This means we give him skila at the entrance of the city that he served Avidizara there. Ataime, so you're saying, Shar She'avad bai, that you give him skila there at this city, entrance of the city that he served Avidizara there. Oyena ala Shar She'nidin bai. Maybe the Pasuk means to say that if he was brought to a Bezdin in a different city, so we should give him the skila at the entrance of that city where he's being judged. So the Gemara says, no. Nemar sha'arecha lamata. It says the term sha'arecha below when we're judging the person and we're giving the Einish. The nemar sha'arecha lamayla. And it also says earlier in the Pasik, the term sha'arecha, which in, earlier in the Pasik there it says, ki matza which is talking about the pla- time and the place where the person actually served the Avedi Zara. Ma sha'arecha lamayla, just like the first time it says sha'arecha. That's talking about the place where he served the Zara. So to when it repeats again the term Shorecha and it's speaking about where he's being judged, it means that you have to give him the skill in that same city, the place where he served the Zara. Now the Braisa continues and says there's another thing that we learn out from this term Shorecha. Another Pshat, Shorecha means Veloy Share of the Kechavan. That this that we say that we give him the skill at the entrance of the city is not if it's a city of Goyim. But the Gemara asks on this, how could you learn two things from one Pasik? Hai sha'arecha ha pikte. You already learned out from the word sha'arecha to teach me that he gets the skila in the city that he served the Zara and not in the city that he's being judged in. How could you now learn out another halacha that not if it's a shar of Goyim? And says the Gemara, in Kenlem the cross shar. If we would only be learning one thing from this Pasik, the Torah could write the word shar. And I would understand that that means the shah of the city that he served the Avodah Zara. My sha'arecha. Why does it say sha'arecha? Your cities. So that means only if it's a Jewish city. Your Jewish cities. Shemami not tarti. We could learn out a second halacha from here as well. That if it's a Gaish city, then you have to give him the skill at the, the shah of the Bezdin. So now the Gemara says, but Ashkechon, Avedis Kechav. So we have only the source over here for the place where you give the skill regarding a person that served the Avodah Zara. Naira Mairasa Minola. Going back now to the Allah of Naira Mairasa, how do we know that over there as well that we give the skila at the entrance of the city? And if there's a city of Goyim that we give the skila at the entrance of the Bezdin? Amrabavo, Srabavo says, Gomar, we learn it out in the following way. And this is a very interesting limud. And Rashi says that this limud is a asmachta mit rabbanan. It's not a real limud minatayre. And the limud goes as follows Pesach mi Pesach. We learn out from the term Pesach. That it says by a naira mairasa that you bring her out to the Pesach, to the door of her father's house. And we compare that to the term Pesach that it actually says by the Mishkan. By the Mishkan it says, Mosach Pesach Shara Chatzah. That there's an opening to the Chatzah. And over there by the Mishkan it uses both the term Pesach and the term Shar. So therefore then, O Pesach Mishar. So since by the Mishkan it uses the term Pesach and Shar, so I compare Pesach to Shar as well. And then, Vishar Misharecha. And then I learn out Shar from Sharecha, meaning because it says by the Nara Meirasa Pesach. So I understand from this that it says in another place the term Pesach together with Shar that I could compare the term Pesach that it says by the Nara Meirasa that's Chayef Skila 
to the term Sha'arecha that it says by Avedizara that's Chayiv Skila and they have the same halacha. That you give the Skila by the entrance of the city and if the entrance of the city is Gayim, so then you give it at the Bezni. Tan Rabbanam, we learned another halacha. Moitzi Shemra, person that's Moitzi Shemra and his wife, Loike Venoisen Meyesela. So he gets Malchus for this and also he has to pay the Knas of 100 coins. Rabbi Yudai, Rabbi Yudai says, Lulka is Loike Mikol Mokim. Malchus he'll get no matter what. But Meyesela, this that he pays the Knas of 100 coins, it's, there's a condition to this. Baal, if this husband first had a relation with his wife and then he was Moitzi Shemra, then, nice, then he has to pay this Knas. Loi Baal, but if he himself never had a relation with his wife, ain't a nice. So then he does not pay this knas. But how would he know? So we have, well... We, how would he know if she, she, she did it or not? Again, if he, if the husband was by her. That's what it means. If no, the husband... He knows, if he, knows that she was, if he, she was... No, no, so you're right. Uh, so Rashi explains when a husband comes and says that my wife had a relation with someone else, he could be uh, one in two ways. Either you could say, could, because could I, know, I know that she already was not Absula anymore. Like we had before on the Masechta, Pesach Pesuach Matzasi, or it could be he brought Adam. He brings Adam that say, we saw, we know that she had a relation with someone else at the time when she was she after Adam, even without admitting. Adam, the husband brings Adam. Okay. That could be the case over here. So the Gemara now explains, Kamiflegi beplukte the Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov and Rabbanon. The, the argument here in this Braise between the Tanakhama, the Rabbanon, and Rabbi Yehuda is the same argument that we'll have later here between Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov and the Rabbanon. And the Hachi Ka'omar, and this is how you learn this, the Prat Nis Braisa. HaMaitzi Shemra, the Tanakam is saying that someone that's Maitzi Shemra, Loike Venaisim Meyesela. So he gets Malchus, and he also has to pay the Knaz, Ben Baal, Ben Shaloi Baal. Whether he, the husband that is, first had a relation with her or not, it makes no difference, and Kerabanon. And that is because he's following the opinion of the Rabbanon. We'll see later that Rabbanan's opinion is the whole halacha of Moitzi Shemra applies whether the husband first had a relation with her or not, it makes no difference. And that's the opinion of the Tanakhama here as well. Rabbi Yudai, Rabbi Yudai says, Lilka is like him. Malchus he does get. But call Makim. Either way, it doesn't matter if he had a relation with her before or not. Meyesela, but the Knast that he has to pay 100 coins. Baal Naisen, Loi Baal Ene Naisen. If he had a relation with her, then he has to pay that Knast. And if not, he doesn't. And the reason is Karabalazab and Yaakov, because he holds a Karabalazab and Yaakov. And what's Rabbi Yazim and Yaakov's opinion? The Gemara will later say that Rabbi Yazim and Yaakov will prove that the whole parsha of Moitzi Shemra is really only talking about if the husband first has a relation with her. And then he's Moitzi Shemra on her. Then the Titus says he has to give the Knas. And therefore Rabbi Yazim and Yaakov says if he was not boiled, he does not give the Knas. So Rashi explains, so then why does he have to get Malchus? If the parish of Meitzi Shemra does not apply, if he himself did not have a relation with her before, why does Rabbi Yehuda still say that he gets Malchus? So Rashi says a very interesting thing. The reason he gets Malchus is because even though it's not part of Meitzi Shemra, but still there's another love. You may not go around spreading bad rumors about other people. And over here he spread a bad rumor about his wife that she went and had a relation with someone else. So for this itself, he should get Malchus. Not because of Maisi Shamra, but because of the love of Leselech Rachel. Then Rashi adds another point. I usually, we have a cloud that if a person does an Aveda, a love, She'ein boy Maisa, where there's no action, you don't get Malchus. So as Rashi, Rabbi Yehuda actually, his opinion is that even a love, She'ein boy Maisa, you still get Malchus. So therefore, even though it's not part of the parasha of Maisi Shamra, you still get Malchus. Now, Ikid Amri, there's another version of explaining this argument here between the Rabbanon and Rabbi Yehuda. Kula, Karabliyazah, Ben Yaakov. Both of their opinions follow Rabliyazah, Ben Yaakov, that say that the parsha of Moitzi Shemra is only after the husband was boiler. And Vahachi Kama, and this is how you have to read the Braise. The Tanakhama's opinion is, Hamoitzi Shemra, Loike, Venaisa, Meisela. If you Moitzi Shemra on your wife, so you get Malchus, and you have to pay the Knas. And we have to add now to the words of the Tanakhama, Vuhu Shabal. And but that's only if he was boiler first. Then he's going, to have to, he's going to have to pay the knas and he's going to have to get Malchus. And the point is that the Tanakhama's opinion is that there is no Malchus for Leiseleich Rachel. That Malchus for a person spreading bad rumors is since there's no action, there's no Malchus. So therefore, if he does not get Malchus at all and no knas either. Rabbi mm-hmm. Yudha says, Lil Kais Loike. You still do get Malchus, Mikol Makim, either way. And the reason is because according to Rabbi Yehuda, uh, the, the Malchus... Even though it's a lav shame by Maise, but nevertheless, like we said before, Rabbi Yudha's opinion is even a lav shame by Maise, you still get Malchus on this. So that's uh, the Machloikis here between Rabbi Yudha and the Tanakam according to this version.